Hi everybody. In an earlier video, we looked at all about custom events and how to both define your own events as well as have events that wrap existing built-in JavaScript events and make sure we have our application react to them accordingly. Now, the thing about custom events in JavaScript is that they often involve another UI element. It could be a div element or it could be something more specific like your window or something like that. But in reality though, there'll be way too many cases where the general idea that events bring to the table of having some decoupled UI where you have a cause and effect where something happens here, something else happens in reaction to it, and the only common thing between them is this one event, it's very nice to have in non-UI element situations as well. You might just have some data that you want to react to and then have all the various parts of your app that needs to react to that data in some way be able to do so without having to have a UI element kind of thrown into the picture. So the way I like to talk about in this video is you are learn to learn about how to dispatch events on regular objects, not UI objects, but regular objects and it's a coding it up video so less slides more code the only slide I am going to show you that's relevant here is that the way I'm going to be describing this is not by writing all this logic on our own I actually do want you to look into this code event dispatcher.js by the creator of 3JS, Mr. Doob. And so I'm gonna, if you're following along actively, I want you to pause. I want you to go to this URL, github.com slash Mr. Doob slash event dispatcher.js, copy the, all of that code and place it in a JavaScript file that you can easily reference from an HTML file that you'll be building. So if you don't have all of that ready yet, pause the video, get that going. So that way you have a JavaScript file called event dispatcher that has the exact same code that Mr. Doob and team have created because this will be a core part of how we will make our event dispatching work across any generic JavaScript object. Okay, so I've already done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into my VS code. And so what I have here is a file called event dispatch underscore object at htm. You can name it whatever you want. And I also have the same page open in the browser on the right hand side. And I have my console displaying because I'm gonna be using the console to kind of just validate that our code does the right things it does. And in the same folder, I also have the event dispatcher.js file, the file that I encourage you to copy from the GitHub page we had earlier. And what this event dispatcher file does is it provides a lot of handy methods for being able to, in many ways, to deal with event listeners, being able to add an event listener, check if you already have one, and remove an event listener, because that's really a critical part of event handling in JavaScript. And by having it be in a separate file, because these, all this logic here comes for free when you're dealing with any kind of a UI element, but because we're not dealing with UI elements, we're gonna be recreating that ourselves. And by recreating, I mean relying on the, the great work that's been done in 3JS and Mr. Doob in providing that already. So once you have that in place, it's time for us to write our code. You can use any code that you want. I'm using VS Code, which means I can just do this and have a boilerplate HTML page up and running. Let me give it a page. Let me call it event dispatching on regular objects. Let me save it and let me refresh the page to make sure that the title updates, which as you would expect it would do, but it also make sure that the page I'm coding against and displaying are exactly the same thing. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reference this JavaScript file. So I'm gonna do script source equals event dispatcher.js. And this just ensures that when this page loads, that all this, you know, all the objects we see here are going to be displaying appropriately. So now all it remains is for us to actually write the code to take advantage of how this is going to work. And so there are a few things to kind of, you know, keep in mind as part of this. And the big thing really is that the goal of us using even the event dispatcher code is that we can spend more time focusing on the core logic we want to implement and less time re-implementing something that is more I would consider boilerplate. So what I want to do is I want to create an object that is really of type inventory. And what I want to do is as items get added or removed from our inventory, I want to fire an event. I want to fire an event that I can listen to to be updated when any changes happen to whatever it is that I'm currently inventorying. And so the way I'm going to do is I'm going to first create my inventory object. And I'm going to use a class syntax for that. So class inventory. And now the interesting part here is that I'm going to now extend event dispatcher. And this is the part that kind of comes into the picture because we're now referencing the event dispatcher code that has been created. And so I'm gonna call the constructor and do super there because why not? And let's see, 
as part of our inventory, I want to be able to store some items. So this that items equals an empty array. And now all I'm going to do is add some basic methods for being able to add items and remove items. So add item, I would be parentheses item, this dot items dot push, just an array. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a push item right here. And then I'm going to do a remove item item and removing items has a little bit more code that is going to be needed. So I'm going to do let index equals this dot items dot index of item, essentially getting the index position of the item we want to remove. And we know that if an item is found, an index position of the position of the item in the array will be returned. And if an item is not found, we'll get negative one. That's not logic I came up with. It's just JavaScript and how it does things. So I'm going to do if index equals negative one, which means that an item was not found, or sorry, does not equal negative one. That means an item has been found. I will go ahead and remove the item from my array. So this is items.splice and index and then one I only want to remove a single item okay great so now we have an ability for us to kind of create our inventory and then be able to you know add and remove things now one of the things i mentioned though is that i actually want to be able to you know be able to be notified when items get added or removed. Now, this is the part that is really where Event Dispatcher plays a big role because the way I want to do this notification is not by having my objects that I end up creating directly map to the, the items array here and like follow along on its own. Nope, I want to keep it fully decoupled. I want to fire an event each time this happens, and then whatever is listening to that event will automatically be notified. A very, a very simplified approach for solving what would otherwise be a very, very tightly coupled problem, which I don't want to get myself into. And so, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create, I'm going to create a notify method. And what notify is going to do? It's going to do the similar dispatch event logic we saw in our earlier videos on custom events. So this dot dispatch event, and I'm going to put an object here. Type is going to be the name of the event. It's going to be notify, and then I'm going to from there have an object called message, and it's just going to have one item in it, which is the array that's currently storing all the items that we have. All right. And so once we have this, all that really remains is for us to make sure we call notify every time a change has currently been happening. So I'm going to call this.notify each time an item is added. And I'm going to call this.notify each time an item is also removed from our array. So this.notify. And I could put this outside of this area to show that it's only happening when an item, you know, at any time this method is called. But in this case, I only care if there's going to be a change what's happening. So I'll just keep it simple as that. So now is the easy part. Now the easy part is actually using this. And I'm about to cough, so I'm going to drink some water. I have this ridiculously large Nalgene bottle that my wife got me, which has been really, really helpful. So. You know, it's all live. There's no editing going on here. They're going to watch me drink some water. That's some good water. All right. So now let's continue off, which is we define our inventory class. Let's go ahead and actually instantiate it and use it. So let me zoom in just a little bit more because well, we have the room for it. So let orders equals new inventory. And I'm going to now do something which I could have never done before, which is orders that add event listener, adding an event listener on a generic object. And the event name is called notify. And I'm going to call a function called show update. And I, you know, I don't care about bubbling or tunneling in this case, so it's going to be false. So now I'm going to do orders dot, actually before I do that, let's go ahead and define what our show update event handler is going to look like function show update event and now all I'm going to do is here let items equals e that message you you know where's e that message and where's message coming from it's coming from the definition that we have here under notify where dispatch event is having the message object or message property that contains the value this that items I'm directly mapping to that by doing e that message right here and then console.log, you know, I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to use the, the template literal syntax. Current items are, 
and just do a printout of all the items that are currently in my array and close it and we're good to go. So let me just refresh the page right now to make sure there's no errors of anything going on. Okay, everything looks good so far. So now let's go ahead and actually use this. So now I'm going to do orders that add item and let's add apples to the page. All right, apples. If I refresh the page, notice that current items are apples. And the reason that it works out is because orders that add item, apples. So that means that I now add the item to my array. And once I've done that, this that notify gets called, which means that the notify event is dispatched with uh, you know, the event body containing both the type of the event, but also the, the arrays themselves. And so therefore by calling this all in a roundabout way, show update gets called, the current items are gets called, and that's what you now see printed on screen right here. And so if I add more items to it, I can do orders dot add item oranges, let me capitalize the O. And you can now see when I refresh the page, current items are apples, comma, oranges. Likewise, I can do orders dot add item and do bananas. And if I refresh the page, you'll now see all three of them are showing current items are apples, oranges, and bananas. And just like that, I can also remove items. Orders dot remove item. And if I do oranges, and if I logic correctly, apples and bananas will be the only things remaining. And you can see current items are apples and bananas. And of course, if I try to remove something that does not exist, like let's say, you know, we have this imaginary kiwi fruit that we want to remove, but we never added it, our code handles it appropriately as well. You can see that that doesn't get called because the event for it doesn't get called either because we have our does notify only firing in the remove case if an actual item is removed. Now, there's a lot you can do. It's not the most robust inventory item. For example, you know, I do not think about basically having duplicate values. I guess set object would have probably been a better use of this data structure than an array, but that's okay though. You know, if we got it right the first time around, there'd be no reason to have continuous improvement. And so let's go back to where we are right now. There you have it, a very quick overview of the code it requires to be able to take the event dispatcher logic that was built by the 3JS team and Mr. Doob and being able to use that in our, in our example to solve the problem that we've always had or if you didn't realize you always had it, you now realize it and you'll be dealing with it is how do you make event handling and event dispatching work when you're dealing with generic objects that do not have all that rich backstory and inheritance from a regular UI element where you have event handling and all that stuff kind of built into it. So if you have any questions on this, please post in the forums at formnetgroup.com where I and a lot of really talented web developers and programmers, just cool people in general, we're happy to help you out, answer your questions about this or any topic. If you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that will be coming out. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter to be notified of just, just cool web development things in bite-sized little pieces. And if you like videos, content, great, you're at the right spot. But if you also like written content, you can read it, of course, as article form on Krupa.com. Or you can also find many of these things in book form across the various books that I have written, many of whose covers you see right here, which exist in both paperback and Kindle editions. So check it out if that is something that is of interest to you. And with that, I'll see you all next time.